every day saving lives. But even their skills are limited. But now thanks to pioneering work from doctors in Cambridge, even the most severely injured patients stand a better chance of survival. It's attracting interest from all over the world and it's likely to be copied in other areas. We've been given exclusive access to find out how it works. Okay, so get some more morphine in. All the time you get yourself distressed like that and cry, you tighten your tummy muscles and that's what's going to make it sore. The team in orange jumpsuits are a new generation of the emergency services, trained to deliver treatment usually only possible in a hospital A&E. Today they've been called to a house in Cambridgeshire. Karen has a complicated knife injury in her tummy. It's in a very precarious situation as to where, whether it is gone inside the abdomen or not. Um, the chances of that going in deeper by moving her is much higher. That's why we have left her as she is. So we have managed to get some IV access into her, given her some advanced pain relief, so that she if uh, her observations, as we have done, they are all fine at the moment. So we are, we have got much more time to play with at the moment. You need to yeah. keep an eye on that. Carrying Karen downstairs is too risky, so the fire service remove her from the bedroom. Usually, if you call an ambulance, you'll get a highly trained paramedic. But Dr. Monajit Chowdhury and paramedic Simon Standen are pre-hospital emergency specialists who can do even more than regular paramedics. For the paramedics to give any strong painkillers beyond morphine would be quite difficult. So we gave her enhanced painkillers, things like uh, fentanyl. But uh, if she would have deteriorated from her airway point of view, we could have taken care of that. We could have intubated her, give her the anaesthetic drugs, and keep her stable, keep her physiology stable until we reach the hospital. Pre-hospital emergency medicine can help the most severely injured patients, and it is being pioneered here. This is the major trauma centre for the east of England at Adam Brooks A&D unit in Cambridge and it's the best place to be in the region if you're badly injured. But there are some injuries that can be treated even before the patient has left the scene of their accident. 11-year-old Brandon Gravick was hit by a bus, leaving him with life-threatening head injuries. The care he received at the roadside reduced brain damage and kept him alive. They saved my life and if they didn't act as fast as they did then I wouldn't be here right now so yeah I am actually very grateful. Basically they said that they were going to put him to sleep, put him in a coma straight away right at the mm. side of the road so we're not going to wait to get to hospital we're going to do this right now so we want to protect his brain function and um, yeah, it's the safest option for him and uh, get the machine doing the breathing for him so that his brain has very little to do. you believe had it not been for the rapid response that Brandon may not be here today? Absolutely. Whether or not he would get through that really depended on the care that he got right then and there and I think because they put him to sleep he's still here. <laughs> a relatively small number of people will benefit from this treatment. It's about 700 a year but for those who do need it, pre-hospital treatment could change their lives. It's focused at people who are really, really sick. I often say who's whose needs exceed the capabilities of the normal NHS ambulance service responses. They're by definition a small, relatively small group of people, but they're really important. The first training course of its kind has been set up in Cambridgeshire, training doctors and paramedics. It was started and funded by medical charity Magpass, working in partnership with the NHS. Rob McKenzie is the clinical director of the major trauma centre at Adambrooks and developed the scheme with Magpass. I spent several years providing care as a volunteer doctor when I was free. And I started to question what was happening when we weren't there. What was happening, could, could we do this better? Could we provide a more consistent level of care? And it, the only way to do that is to make Brussels emergency medicine part of the NHS. Response. So I started some work about 10 years ago now, uh, nationally, to develop this area of clinical medicine as a specialist endeavour in its own right. Magpass is supporting five trainees in the new specialism. Dr Nick Foster is the first of the trainees. I've always wanted to do pre-hospital emergency medicine and when I started training as a doctor it was to do this. 
So I'm an emergency doctor. Um, I have all sorts of skills at students. You all right, mate? My skills are best placed um, as early on in the disease process as possible. So you can make the biggest difference as, as, as early as you can get there. With regards to the public, with regards to the ambulance service, we are, we are people in helicopters that fly in, in orange suits to, to get them out of trouble. What we're hoping to do is increase the numbers of doctors involved in enhanced care teams and pre-hospital care and uh, provide a more uniform nationwide uh, level of care. Hello, it's Hello, Nick guys. with the Air Ambulance. This is Phil. How Hi, can I'm we help? I'm on the paramedics. I'm, I'm on my own here, but this guy... Um, Rob Major the is a consultant from Addenbrooke's yeah. Hospital who supervises training at the Magpass Centre. We spend a lot of time simulating um, unwell patients um, in our training. Now, Nick and Phil here are actually the duty team, but in a bit of downtime today between jobs, um, there we're doing a training scenario. It's uh, practising and repracticing and re... Um, uh, going through the process of putting someone to sleep at the roadside, which is probably one of our most risky uh, practices in terms of what we do. This sim man um, vomits, breathes, talks, um, has a heartbeat, uh, you can collapse his lungs, um, you can uh, put modules in him for surgical airways, some chest surgery procedures, he can have broken bones sticking out. This is as realistic as it gets. So much so that the first time I performed this procedure for real, uh, on a real patient, it was only when I was at the, uh, putting the laryngoscope in his mouth that I thought, oh, hang on, this is a real mouth. So it's very realistic. Bougie out. Thank you. Yeah. So still 100. Still East of England is the uh, area of the country leading this in many respects in terms of, of we were the first people to get and the first trainee in, in pre-hospital emergency medicine. You have to have specialist competence effectively, so that, that's, that's our role and that's why Cambridge has been so important in this whole process. Okay guys, you can stop there. What we'll do is we'll, um, we'll do a quick debrief, we'll turn the simulator off. And now this new specialism and training is being seen as a model for other regions, not just in England, but around the world. Our colleagues in Australia are looking to now mirror the subspecialist area of practice or the subspecialty curriculum that we've put in place. So. Even in countries which have got arguably slightly more developed systems, people are looking at our experience and saying, what can, what can we take from that and how can we apply it to our populations? Now the course is being adopted nationally, Dr. McKenzie believes it will improve emergency response in England. I think the subspecialty will make a huge difference to pre hospital care in this country over the next 10 years. Patients will be able to access consistently a very high level of pre-hospital critical care support. Brandon is living proof that this treatment can save lives. They say that the first two years are the crucial point in recovery. That's when the most recovery happens in the shortest amount of time. And he's doing very well. He's, he's back at school now. He'd missed about a year's worth of school. He missed his, pretty much his Quite entire first time, yeah. year. Yeah. They used my um, case of scenario as an example to train up more people so that other people can save lives as well, which I thought was quite good. Of course, I was asked if it was okay with me, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I was fine with it, so yeah. And if you want to get in touch with me about anything you think 